Good morning. Good morning. Hey, that's a good response. Everybody had coffee? Yeah. Everybody's caffeinated? Did you record? Oh, no, I didn't. Go ahead. I thought Welcome you did. to meeting number whatever it is. I've got Recording in progress. Okay, fine. Got it. Meeting number, I'm going to guess, 325, 326, something like that. Um, the Mac Group, Dayton, Ohio. Um, do we have any new people here today? I was kind of late, so I don't know. Okay. All right. It's, it's acceptable. It's acceptable. Okay. That was my favorite response to my boss. I don't know, but I always followed it up with, I'll find out. If it's important. Uh, so the welcome, if we don't have anybody here, we don't have to do a welcome, so we'll just move on to the next item, which would be news. You have a news item? Two, well, a few big ones. The Apple released iPad, oh, for the iPad, and for, for iOS, well, for iPad OS, they released Final Cut Pro and Logic Pro. Okay. And they'll both be available in about a week. They are subscription only, about five bucks a month. Okay. And um, it's cool. I'm really excited about this. I don't know if I'm going to use them, but they're, it's pretty cool that they're doing it. Okay. Because I teach people to fish, I want to show you something. Okay? You fire up your web browser of choice. I can find one here. There we go. And then, once you're on your web browser of choice, you go to Apple. And then you're on the home page, front page of Apple's website. Go all the way down to the I bottom. I want to have a nice time. But <laughs> okay. And then I know you they will look where it says about there. Apple. And then you click where it says Newsroom. And you'll see all of these news items from Apple of various things. So for example, if I scroll down here a little bit, we'll see Apple brings Final Cut Pro and Logic Pro to iPad. The next one's good too. The new, the new watch band. Yeah. The new, there, yep. There'll be so a big release this next All sorts week. of stuff there. Yep. I'll add one other thing. That iPad app, uh, article was first came out as a rumor on Mac Rumors and the security at Apple are using classic techniques to find leakers. They got it. You give different people information that's slightly different, combinations and permutations, then you see what gets published. And then you know. And so there was a public apology on Facebook where the guy was saying, I'm so sorry, I apologize, my sister is no longer employed at Apple Computer because I had to be a big guy and rat, you know, tell the folks at uh, Mac Rumors some of this stuff that, and Apple Insider, some of this stuff that was coming on, and she got canned. Okay. So, when you want to know something about Apple, go to the Apple website, scroll all the way down, go to in that bottom right hand corner where it says about Apple, click on Newsroom. I'll give you a couple other little tidbits. You may not know this, but out there in the financial markets, those technical wizards, those day traders are saying, you know, Apple, it's, it's looking shaky, you know? Their iPhone sales are not what they could be. You know, the uh, iMac market, the, the Mac market is being cannibalized. People aren't using watches and all this other stuff. Well, Apple has now opened their online store in Vietnam. The reason why they've opened their online store in Vietnam is because they now have suppliers up and producing in Vietnam, and the suppliers and their employees want to use Apple products. Plus, you've had two Apple stores open in India, okay? 
and there's manufacturing occurring in India. Not good quality manufacturing yet, but they're getting there. So Foxcan, Foxconn has opened uh, two facilities. They're, they're actually producing stuff at this point. So that's, to me, that, that's, uh, that's not a sign of a company that's uh, got supply chain issues or that's uh, in uh, bad shape. Plus, the other thing they did, I have no idea where to put this thing. I'm just going to save it over there. Uh, it doesn't, yeah, it shows up here, it doesn't show up for the Zoom folks. The other thing that, that's going on is, uh, again, another sign of Apple as a failing company. They've increased their dividend. You can always tell a failing company when they increase their dividend. Okay, I'm being snarky here. I'm not being serious. So, uh, let's see. Anybody want to talk about Google and passcodes? We're that whole new stuff coming down the line? I did it. You did? Okay. Already, it's not new stuff. The stuff they're doing is the same old stuff? You can still use your password if you don't want to use your password. So if you log in, if you log into your Google page, yeah. and you say you want to use passcodes, then it'll ask you to, to turn on your passcode, You'll use your touch ID or face ID or whatever, yeah. it'll store it. But if you ever log on another computer that's not yours, you can log in with your password. But it, it does give you a chance to test the passcode okay. idea. It's good, it's solid. Does anybody want to hear anything about artificial intelligence? What's going on out there? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you have this thing called Chat GBT. All right. That and it was uh, primary investor was Elon Musk. That guy seems to be in everything. He's got his fingers in all of this stuff. Anyway, and the people who did chat GBT were all folks that had been working at Google, but because the head of AI at Google wanted to explore all the ethical kind of, you know, ethical issues first, they were delaying and delaying releasing stuff. So these people got frustrated about three years ago, four years ago, and said, hey, we'll go get some VC money and venture capitalists. Okay, not Viet Cong. Just okay, VC money and started up. Well, Google now has released their chat GBT called Barb, and it's now available for people to use. And Microsoft has incorporated it into their Edge browser. And guess what happened? The Edge browser, which most people go, huh, is now going up in terms of people using it because of that AI function is there. So I did one simple thing. I can never remember the difference between the financial functions in Google Docs you know, Google Drive, uh, Sheets, mm -hmm. and Excel, mm -hmm. and Apple. The functions do different stuff, but you know, never can remember it. So what I did was, I took a sample formula from Google Sheets, put it into ChatGBT, and said, can you write a formula that does the same thing for Microsoft Excel 2019? And it spat out a formula, I copied it, I pasted it in, I filled the rows, it works. Then I went, oh, let's push the envelope. Can you write a formula for Apple numbers? Their financial function, it does the same thing. And it also wrote something, and I put it into Apple. And then when I went to fill, I remembered Apple does their fill in a really strange way, so I had to redo it. But it worked. So I'm going like, oh, okay, we got formulas. Charts are next. Charts are next. Okay. Um, what would you think about if they incorporated that right into your spreadsheet? Where you know you say, hey, Alexa, hey, whatever the uh, Clippy. Remember Clippy? <laughs> Microsoft Clippy? Hey, Clippy. Fill this, I want, I want to, in here I want the uh, average percentage for columns A and columns B. I want them added and I want them here and just put it in and it does it. 
It'll be like calculators were to doing math with paper and pencil. People will not know how to do basic skills anymore, and they will not know how to code. But they'll still be functional. As long as okay. Talk, yeah. they're okay. But when they don't recognize the value is wrong, that's a huge problem. Or that they're measuring the wrong thing. Or they don't know what it is measuring, and they do a decision based on that. That's how you get bridge collapses. If you remember, there was a Marriott, I think it was a Marriott Hotel, where they had this walkway going across. And the design agency did the specs. And then when they went to replicate it in another Marriott, they didn't pay those same people again. They just looked at it and they replicated it. But they did their connection of the U-beams differently. And if you have it done this way, the load is distributed equally across. If you do it this way, you've got stress points that will fail. So. so. Okay, anyway. Um, the other little tip that I'll give you is if I'm logging into ChatGBT, not Google, ChatGBT, if I log in using a Microsoft ID, you know how you have an Apple ID? If you do Microsoft, you have a Microsoft ID. I find that I'll get in more often. It's almost like they're taking the people logging in with a Google ID and putting them over to that line. And this is sort of an express line. If I'm logging into BARD, which is Google technology, if I use a Microsoft account to log in, you know, where it says log in Microsoft or log in Google, you wait. If I log in with the Google ID, I go ahead. So just if you want to play with it, just keep those things in mind. Does anybody else have anything they want to share in the way of news? Going once, going twice. Okay, I'm going to say we're done with news. Okay, uh, home kit minute. Are you going to you need the connect or are you just Yeah, you got the Apple yeah, TV. Yeah, Apple TV's up. So Sorry. what we're gonna do is okay, let me do this. Source down, down, press. And it's there. Hello. <coughs> Apple TV, wakey wakey. There we go. So you got to log into the, and then do your reply. Somewhere here. Meanwhile, <laughs> I'll do a song and dance. Um, we got some other late comments to show up. The topic that's going to be presented today is not theoretical. It's a practical topic. It's going to be showing you a tool that, as a club, we have set up to allow us to communicate more clearly and easily with each other um, rather than just using email. So it's going to be um, interactive. Think of it like uh, a recess yard for the TMG members to get together. You got it. Okay, cool. Then I'm going to back away. Okay, so um, the, the item that's being passed around is this uh, product. It's, it's from a company called Eve, E V E. And um, I, I gave a presentation a couple months ago about a small eyeball looking type of a motion detector um, that looked sort of like a, it, it literally looked like an eyeball. Um, well, that one uh, worked well until version 16 of iOS, and uh, the company that the company that made it decided they weren't going to upgrade their firmware to yeah. be compatible. So um, this product that's going around is not quite as small, but it is battery powered, and as you can see, um, you back on. it's a it's fairly relatively uh, inexpensive compared to some other things. 
but it's it's got a motion sensor I can't do as it well a as a light and temperature sensor built into it and um, <clears throat> I'll screw the ring. There's even uh, this little product on Etsy for seven dollars at plus shipping. It's sort of a, uh, a mount that goes into the corner of a room to mount this device at different angles in a corner. So it's it's pretty well supported. This is a, a screenshot of the uh, app interface that um, shows it, it's it's showing that. Uh, the last motion detected was two days ago, which isn't correct, but um, I do have an automation that's, that's uh, set up that after, after my main light fixture goes off in my living room, um, if somebody walks through the living room, it turns the light back on for 10 minutes just so that nobody stumbles around in the dark. Um, but it also gives you light levels that are present, so uh, I also have it so on a nice cloudy morning like it was this morning. <clears throat> the the light normally goes off so many minutes after sunrise, so it's still dark in the room. So I have it set that if it's below 90 lux, that the light can come back on again uh, for another 30 minutes. Uh, so it's it's pretty flexible. Uh, it, like I said, it's battery powered, so it doesn't. I've just got it sitting on my fireplace mantle, and it's got a pretty good range for as far as motion detection, and it's fairly quick. Uh, I'd say within a second. Um, so um, I, I can highly recommend it if you need something similar. So any questions? What's the actual model number? It's just the EVE. E -V -E. It's called Motion. It's a, it's a new one. It's compatible with the. It's the newer. The newer ones are actually you'll, you'll see a Matter logo on the box. Um, so those are the most recent versions. So. Any other questions? That's good. Okay. Thank you. Because I forgot to replace the batteries in the remote control for the projector last meeting. So I got to use the manual controls. Okay, so the next one's going to be freebies and wanted for sale. You want to lead us off, Dan? Uh, there's a freebie that's new on the freebie table. It's a, a weather station mm -hmm. and uh, battery powered, but. Um, the only drawback is that the remote sensor for temperature does not coordinate with the, the base station. But it's still it's an atomic clock. Yeah. It would give you the time and temperature for the general area, but not your space. So. And the Chamberlain unit yes. is um, left over from the yes. store open. Yep. So if anybody wants to experiment with that, if they've got a Chamberlain or LiftMaster garage door opener they want to try on, it's free for you to take. I learned something else. I want to share it with you. This is highly technical in nature, but it's important that you know this. We had our master bathroom remodeled. They put in a GFI outlet. Then my wife and I, when they were finished, we were you know, elated, so we went out to celebrate. We come back, and my wife presses the garage door open. It doesn't work. She looks at me and she said, did you put that Internet of Things garage door opener that you told me about in our garage? If you did that, then tell me what code I need to put in my phone. And I said, no, dear, I didn't change anything. And what we found out was somehow, some way, when that GFI popped, it stopped the power to the garage. So if you have a garage door open and it has no power, it doesn't matter whether you have an Internet of Things, iPhone-capable smart opener, or a dumb keypad, 
on the outside of the door, it does not work. So I, I'm thinking I'll share this with the governor of California because some of his ideas require more power than they have or theoretically will have for about 50 years. Yes, sir. This is a GFI outlet? A GFI, or a GFI outlet. circuit breaker? A GFI outlet. That should not have affected. I understand that. Get the system. electrician to come back. And then, and then we had them take it out and put the original outlet in. Everything works. So I have an appointment with an electrical contractor to come in for them to look at the wiring in my house. Uh, a Delco engineer owned the house before me. I will mention that. <laughs> okay. To see, this is the same guy that epoxy electric wires together instead of using a wire gun. And apparently he didn't like face covers. It's so much easier to get in there and troubleshoot if your old basement uh, square D boxes don't have face covers. So, anyway, some of the stuff I've been able to repair, but this is I call code, though. <laughs> well, but, you know. Even though I once worked as an electrician, it's so long ago, it's just better to hire somebody and have them come in. So with that said, let's move on to the next one. Help desk. We'll start with the people here that are present. Yes. Uh, I uh, was surfing uh, uh, YouTube, uh, Facebook. And, and my computer froze up. Yeah. So apparently, so I was under attack from some. Yeah. yeah. But what is the proper thing to do when that happens? In other words, it scream. You know, I don't have. I can't move the pointer. Okay. So everything was frozen. No, yeah. Everything was frozen. Well, I I was able to get back to the. Uh, right on the edge is a little bit of the finder exposed, and okay. when I went from that, I went to force quit. Okay, force quit would be the appropriate thing to do. You force quit your applications yeah. and see if finder is still whole, and if at that point finder is also yeah, pushed right. up. I force quit both of them. Then what you would do is you would then do a restart. Force right. quit first for the applications yeah. and a restart follow to clear. Yeah. Okay. Restart would, yeah, would would come up with fresh code or fresh. Yeah. The working spaces where the computer is storing stuff from the browsing and that will not be there when you restart. You're starting out fresh again. Does escape work? Uh, most of the time, no, because what you the only reason you'd be hitting the escape key is if you want to get to that force. Code. And just yeah. so people know what I'm talking about, you're up in your upper left hand corner, about halfway down on the menu is force quit. Yeah. And what it'll do at that point is you'll get a list of programs that are running on your computer, and you can click on the one that you think is problematic. In your case, it would have been a web browser, so either Brave or Safari. Safari. You would click on that, and then you would click the Force Quit button. Yeah. If your keyboard is... Yes, Phil? You can't get to the Apple menu. Use your uh, control option key to escape, and that'll bring the same window up if yeah. your keyboard so once again, Apple, uh, this is a dialog box from the days when Steve Jobs was still around. So it says, Command Option Escape, they tell you what keyboard presses will bring up various things if you don't have a mouse working for some reason. And the keyboard is working. I'm not hit the power button, just shut everything down. And you're if you're talking, if you're talking, if you're talking mechanical hard drives, not always a good idea. Okay, if you're talking solid state drives, yeah, sure.
just like with the iPad. Press the home button and then power off. And then start it up again in the way you go. Because you have, you have ejected them first before they lost power? No, because they may be writing stuff. They may be doing some of their directory maintenance. I, I think I would take the risk, though, if I thought I was under attack and somebody was trying to get into my computer. And I'd say, okay, I'm going to shut things down because I don't know what's going on. The judgment. It's a judgment call. I don't do anything that that is that important anymore that I have to worry about someone getting some important information. Back when I was doing remote administration of servers, yeah, sure. You know, you, you do the restart, you know, remote restart on those servers. And, you know, the network's under attack at a remote location. You're remoting in and you, you have that one device that you can then bring, you know, remotely turn on and bring everything else back up. But if it's just a computer, if it's solid state, yeah, you can just hit the power button and take it down. But I think doing it this way is a little more elegant, a little nicer, more finesse. Yeah, you can get there. Yeah. yeah, if you can get there. If you can't get there, yeah, hit the power button. Do you, do you concur, Bill? Yeah. I mean, you know, if, if your mouse is frozen up and the keyboard works, use the command. Oh, the other thing is, if you have arrow keys on your keyboard and your mouse is frozen up, you can use the arrow keys to move yourself around uh, on the on the Bill. Still work, right? Yes, Marcus. Yeah, you might want to, uh, if it's a browser, probably you were up on a site and after someone sees how you recognize the machine after you. Not TV reset or anything. You might want to uh, go into your Safari browser and, and clear your cache because yeah. Safari behind the scenes when you reboot it oftentimes will try to reload in the background all of the web pages you were at prior prior to rebooting. And it'll just take you right back and reopen that site that was causing the problem again. And Marcus is a hundred percent correct. I had not gotten to that point. Oh sorry. We had we had not Okay, but there's one other thing I would do, okay? As a former network guy, it's always DNS, okay? Even when you say it can't be DNS, domain name services, it's always DNS. So the other thing I do is I clear DNS. I use uh, a program, either uh, the guys in France, Titanium Onyx, or their maintenance program, or I use, because I'm lazy and I'm old now, I use the uh, program from MacPaw, clean my Mac, and I have it just, that's one of the maintenance things they have there, clean DNS. Mm -hmm. Yes? You so said accessing the cache, how do you, how do, you do it? There's an option under the uh, Apple Safari that allows you to reset your web, your web cookies and your, yeah. your history browser. Okay, so I'm, I've got Safari up. I'm going to history. I can go to where it says clear history all the way at the bottom. Oh, okay. Okay, but the web browser has the web browser software has to be working for you to do that. So this is after you you've done the very same thing. You can say clear history. Uh, there's also I'm trying to think if you bring it up and you hold the option key. Does that sound right, Bill? You bring up Safari with the option, it'll clear cache? Yeah, I think it's. Okay. Let's test it. And just out of curiosity, do sure. you click clear all history or none? You can't clear partial? No, you can pick. When you bring that up, it'll ask you what, what you want to do. So you come in, you go history, you say clear history, and then it comes up with a dialog box that says, if I move this other stuff out of the way, You can pick the last hour, a day, you know, whatever you want. See, I, I tend not to clear all history anymore because I'm getting really bad at documenting places that I've been in my web browser. You find a spot, and you, it's there in my history if I need to go back there. Yes, Aaron? One thing I wanted to add to what he said is that if you ever are on your iPhone, 
and you have a thing that pops up that says that you need to call security warning alert 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 the way the iPhone hack uh, hijack works is it wor it uses that pre-cache that he mentioned you can turn your phone off and back on and when you launch Safari it'll say you have a virus or whatever yeah. and you cannot get your foot in the door of that because of the way the iPhone's interface is and it looks like you have a serious virus but all you have is a cached thing that pulls it around if you just drop to the settings on the settings menu and clear your browser cache from that it'll alleviate it. So it seems super severe, but it's just using the same technique of hijacking that, that, that pull where it tries to pull the last page you were on. You will yeah. never get out of it, but if you know where to go, it's trivial to fix. So that's just the, something. The term I use for those things is scareware. Yeah. Oh, one last thing. If you see a 1-800 number in that warning that says you've got a yeah, dangerous virus and call Microsoft, Never call. Think it through. Can you think of a large corporation that actually answers a phone number anymore? <laughs> they always want you to do it via an online chat or, you know. So typically, if it's, if, if you call the number and they pick up right away, you know it's bogus. It can't be real. Because any large company, they want you to go to an online communication, they will deliberately make sure they have nothing, no one, no resources available to answer a phone call for at least like 10 or 15 minutes, you know, put you on hold. Um, there's also another scam where the number you're dialing, you think it's a toll-free number, it's actually one of those where you're getting billed for every minute that the phone calls on. So with those, they will uh, make you wait. Okay. So with that said, let me get our web browser out of the way. Let me get back to an agenda here. No idea what I did with. Just bring up another one. There we go. Agenda. Okay. Help desk. Yes, Ray. Have you seen the advertising uh, where a uh, U.S. company keeps telling you these other, uh, <laughs> like, 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 what's the name of the, uh, the oh, God, <laughs> you got it, like, getting old. Uh, are we talking about robocalls? No, we're talking about, uh, uh, things like malware, sure. and, and the, the things that, the Ukraine company, the, the Mac, yeah, it's a Russian company. It's Sinobi and they're okay. evil as can but be. But there's an American company saying, you don't know what they're seeing. And you, you, you need us because you might be getting infected. Uh, there, there's an article I read, I think it was on C-Note. Uh, I'll try and find it and send it out to the members. It says, the best anti-viral, anti-malware Thing they have on your Mac is nothing. Rely on the gatekeeper and SIP and what's the other one? Help me out here, Marcus. What's the other one that there's gatekeeper, there's SIP, the T2 chip, there's something else that they've got built into the operating system. Uh -oh. that, yeah, that, that stops it. Should I take a, a vest off of my machine? Um, how old of an operating system are you running? If you're uh, still running High Sierra or older, no, 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 no. Oh, fairly current Ventura. You, you really don't need to have a bass. Okay. Because I'm, I always get these pop-up menus and pop-up windows and things. From a bass where they want you yeah, to yeah, pay money for the yeah, VPN yeah, and the other. Yeah. yeah. It's it's time I think for you to kick them to the curb. So typically what I'll use is something like, um, oh, there's an Apple, there's an app on the Apple store, Bit, Bit, uh, Bit Warden, I want to say. It only checks your machine when you tell it to. So that's, you know, if you've been downloading stuff from questionable sources, uh, you know, you would, you would run that and it would check your machine for malware. Uh, again, I'm, 
I'm trying not to do a commercial plug for MacPaw, but their Clean My Mac has a feature where it'll do a deep scan you know, or a light scan of your machine for malware. Um, I do this stuff, but it almost never finds anything. Okay, anybody else going to help this? Am I allowed to help? I'm class? waiting for the other George. The other George always says no. Okay, go ahead. Double dip. Okay, it was on YouTube. Yeah. Came to a, a, a video titled 10 Classic Operating Systems You Can Run on Your Web Browser. Okay. They, the, 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 the little presentation mentions 10 different yep. old operating systems. Yep. Okay, my question is, yep. you, they say in the video, video something, you can get the link to the, okay. to it, okay? Let, let me explain what's going on here. Okay. okay. Software is a service. Okay. So, somewhere on the internet, there's a server. Think of it like a mainframe. And it's got virtual machines running on it that you can access through your web browser. So, let's say you want to run, you want to play around with Mac OS 9, right. or you want to play with Apple DOS 3.3, or ProDOS, or uh, I'm trying to remember my Amiga and Atari stuff. Anyway, uh, yeah, anyway. So, they have it running in a virtual machine on that server, so that's what you're talking to. It's the old client server model. It's not actually running on your machine locally. Oh. The other thing to keep in mind is, so let's say you want to put in some uh, elegant algorithm that you've written to do uh, analyze stock movements. Okay. It's running on their mainframe. It's not running on your local machine. Data is going back and forth. Sometimes it's in plain text. So it's not a secure way to do it either. You can use a web browser such as DuckDuckGo browser or Brave browser and the ads don't come through. It'll spoil you. It will spoil you. I don't know what happens to the ad revenue for Google at that point. So, okay. Have we got anybody else for a help desk? Rick, can you check the Zoomies and see if we have anybody out there that had a help desk? Nope, nothing. Nope, we're good? Okay, then I'm going to move along and go to the raffle. Uh, I'm going to turn the meeting over to Aaron Dingus, who is uh, our newest <laughs> member, and he's going to be doing a presentation about... Discord. Hey everybody, so today we're going to talk about Discord. Also, this art was generated by AI and it's kind of cute until you notice the boy has three legs. <laughs> it's like a little Easter egg in there. <laughs> when I was going through it, this captured the Gen X Quad, what I was looking for, but I didn't you know, do my due diligence, so we ended up with one leg. So let's see here if I can get focus and just. Version, yeah, I'll just do it manually. So today we are talking about, we have an agenda, we're going to talk about what it is, we're going to talk about how to install it, um, we're going to talk about how to set up your account, what the channels are, text, voice, Q&A. Right now this is no context, this is just an agenda, so let me just get right to it and get actually into what we're talking about here. So introduction of what Discord is. So most of the people here uh, worked or, or currently work through a time period where email was a, a, a dominant form of communication at work, right? Um, email is sort of like yesterday's news, and we've sort of moved on at work to either Teams, some places have a thing called Slack. Um, but although we have email clients at work, it gets much, much less traffic. It's become really kind of like the snail mail of the 21st century. Not a lot of email going around, but we use a lot of what's called Teams. This is real similar. If Teams has no context to you, I won't belabor that. Uh, but this is a similar idea, and what it is, is it's a central server for a community, like this one. A community could be anything. It could be a video game community, it could be the 
Harbor Valley PTA. Uh, it can be any group of people that get together. It can be a family reunion committee. It can be any group of people that get together for any contest. A lot of video game players are on there and they play together. Sometimes they're people that have a common interest, like for example, if you're into retro computing, if you uh, are into playing a video game but just in a certain way, if you're into anything you can conceive of, it's a free thing, and so anybody can sign up. And because it's free, people sign up and create these servers with no effort. Uh, the server that I took the uh, liberty of creating as part of this exercise for us, uh, it took me just a few seconds to create. Boom, boom, boom. That was it. I had to set up a few rules to make sure we had officers and non-officers. But other than that, the setup time was nearly instant. So this is a low weight thing that's very easy to set up, and it's also going to be very easy for you to use. This product, Discord, which is the name of this service, is about 10-ish years old, but it really took off more like five or six years ago. So it's pretty well honed. This isn't a new app. This isn't an app that's like got teething pains. This is a very stable, very used service. I really about 100 million people. So there's no like, uh, we're not pioneering here. <laughs> of course, we're switching to something that maybe can let us communicate more effectively. Um, anybody with a common interest can use it. As I said, it's free. Uh, and it's also going to be free for you guys to download and use as well. So here's a sort of dry slide about installation. Um, but the, the long and short of it is, it's in the App Store. I think at this point, we can probably count on most people here to know how to go to the App Store, right? It's called Discord, which is kind of, I think, a funny double entendre, because Discord is arguing. Discourse isn't. Some people at first think it maybe says Discourse, but no, it's called Discord, as in conflict. Um, but it's called Discord, and you can get it on your phone or iPad, just like any other app. Just search for Discord. Um, we're going to encourage you guys to get it in some way or another in the coming days. Uh, we're going to send you an invite code, which is going on either one of three ways. In the app, which again is iPad or iOS, any iDevice can have the app. Two, any browser, that's PC or Mac or even weird things, as long as the browser is normal-ish, you can use it in a browser as a pinch. And then three, there's also a standalone app for both PCs and Macs. So um, either of those methods work. It's the same server. The interface is the same. The apps are really just an Electron app, which is basically a website. Um, and so <clears throat> it is just uh, whatever you prefer. Um, uh, it's easier on the eyes, I think, to do it on a computer. Um, but the beauty of the uh, phone client is that you can turn notifications on. And this is a real-time service. So when you chat in this, and we'll show you what the interface looks like and do something here in a minute. When you chat in this, uh, you are chatting in basically what is a giant organized group chat, and anybody who wants to in the group, so anybody here, can turn on notifications and have it go off on their phone and respond in real time. So Bill, who we all know, uh, is tapped constantly by members of this community for various odds and ends, can get that stuff in real time, and it's a more organized, group-centric way than email. It's not isolated, you can see it, you can control it, you can organize it, um, and then if there's multiple people that can be called out, like the officers of the group, they can all see it. And so, so when you guys need a help request, instead of emailing Bill, you can put it in the help form, and anybody here can respond. I can respond, Rick can respond, anybody here can respond, including Bill, whoever's the most convenient. And, it, and if, you, if you've ever done a group task, there's some similar energy there, right? Everyone in the group can see it and respond to it and interact with it. So that's how you get it installed. It's basically from the App Store. The next thing is you've got to create an account. Um, the good news is, is that when you launch the app, it's going to ask you to create an account. It's just going to say, uh, what do you want? And you just have to give it an email and password. That's the whole process. So email, password, and that's it. Um, you can just, from that point forward, store it, and you don't need to do it anymore. But you do need to give an email password, and it does ask for your date of birth for security purposes. It will send you an email, like a lot of services, and you have to go to the email and click that you received it in order to confirm the email setup. That's the entire account setup process. Again, pretty standard stuff. So now, I want to get into what happens when you're actually in. Let's talk about it. So let's say you download the app, next, 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 set up an account, email, password, and now you want to actually use it. So let's go ahead. And you said you downloaded Discord on here? Yep. Should be in the toolbar of Discord. <coughs> I'm a huge fan of just that. Uh, so starting up here. And that's a normal startup, and it almost always says that it's going to update something. 
Yes, it always updates on launch, and they update it about every other day. And this should probably, will probably be faster on the modern Mac than your phone. Usually I find it to be a little faster. All right. So we are, are we logged in? We are logged in as Bill, so good. That's saying we have to log in. They sell a thing called Nitro. It is totally optional, and it lets you make it very pretty and fun, and we can skip that entirely. Right. I'm used to having that up there. Um, okay, so um, this is what it looks like when you're logged in. Um, and when you come in, there's these text channels. We have five text channels and one voice channel. And these is how you communicate. You simply click on a channel. We'll talk with General, and I'll just talk to everybody. You can see that uh, uh, Rick and Bill have already come on here. We've been prototyping this a little bit. Um, I'm going to bring up this a little bit. We'll have some more passes on some of the functionality. Well, Aaron's doing that. The first impression I had of Discord server was I went, Oh, God, I'm going to administer this. It's going to be like the sysop of a BBS, where you can have people, multiple people logged in at the same time, chit-chatting back and forth, chat rooms. You can do video chat. Uh, you can post something in the for sale section without having to send an email to Mark. And I went, oh, more work, Bill. More work for you. But it's going to make things easier for the members. Yeah, and it, it is designed, again, it's been pretty well honed. This is a very well loved and used product. And so the administration of it, I've done some of it to set it up, really isn't that bad. And it's kind of designed to enforce that for you, kind of out of the box. So you'll notice these channels. Bill just mentioned some of them. I'm going to go through their purpose. We just have six of them, and so it's pretty easy to uh, attest to. Um, Aaron? And, yes, sir. How do they get to TMG? Uh, that's a good point. When you launch Discord, um, and you are going to be never having ever used it. Thank you. Um, somehow I skipped that. If you never, ever, ever have used it, you're not going to see our thing in it. You're not going to see TMG in it yet because you haven't been invited. There is a code called an invite code. That code um, is, lasts about a month, and we are going to send one with, when Mark sends the uh, minutes uh, update packet after the meeting, that code will be in there. So the order of operations is get it on your phone, it'll be empty and ready, and then click on the link they sent you, and it'll take you and say, do you want to join TMG? You say yes, and then you're in. And then you'll see this icon right there on the left. Until you see that, you'll just see a plus sign to add ad hoc. Like, for example, let's say that I was interested in gaming. Uh, oops, this is setting one up. <laughs> That's a great one. That's yeah, I'm in. Yes. You're logged in to say I'm on this So I'm not going to monkey with anything. Okay. So, uh, yeah, we're not going to monkey with anything. Because um, I did get, Bill has power. Um, so the general channel is just for general communications. That's just the chatting. That is just, hey, everybody, how's it going? I just saw an interesting thing that happened. That's just where most conversation will go. If you want to connect with someone in this group and there's no other context or meaning, you know, hey, like here, he put this. Uh, some fun AI stuff that they've seen, or some interesting articles, just chit-chat. It can be literally about anything. And, and really, we're not draconian here, but we do want to follow the theme roughly. Um, we have a help desk here, and this is where we want you, and here's a joking one about uh, no copy cup holder anymore, because there's no CD-ROM drive. Um, but this is where we would like you to start sending just your- In Ray Cartwright's defense, it was a true cry for help. He wanted to know what happened to his coffee cup holder. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been a long day. I can't even remember the last time I had an optical drive, right? It's been a long time. Me too. Um, so, uh, yeah, so, so help desk is where we want to put this stuff. Instead of emailing Bill, put it here. Again, since it's here, if I type this, this is a sample. When I do that, it is going to, you heard the little bleep over there. <laughs> Anybody who's using it will get a notification if they want. So Bill will get a notification and then we can come out here and help you, just like an email. But if someone else is in here and I know the answer, if you say, how do I clear cash or something like that, and anybody else knows it, they can chime in. So mm -hmm. it becomes a, a sort of a group weaponizing, for lack of a better word, of the team, <laughs> shared. Um, 
here's where we're going to put just general news. Um, uh, Bill has put something here about scareware. Here is a buy and sell channel. Um, so the kind of things that get put on the table or get mentioned in the buy and sell time could go here. And then here's a just general announcement um, announcement channel. Now people like meeting announcements. Meeting announcements. Um, uh, this church is being renovated on this Saturday, so we have to move it to Saturday. Things like that. Um, the summer coming up, probably a good announcement. The break for the summer would be a good announcement to go here. Um, what I want to talk about is what you can do when you respond. So, so, it, so you just saw me type it simply, but there's actually more stuff you can do. You can add little uh, gifts, like reaction gifts, like memes. You can add emoji, like this boy here. Um, there's a zillion of them. I'm just going to do plus symbol, but it's like any other thing. There's lots of emoji here. Um, got a little plus symbol. Um, you can do things like upload a file. You can split this thread off and create a new thread. There's some little built-in apps you can do as well. Um, this right here is an ad for this thing called Nitro. Again, that's the currency. We're just going to ignore it. Um, but if you want it or use it for another context, it lets you have your name be fancy colors, and it lets things like that happen. Eric, yes, sir. question about Nitro. Is that how they fund this stuff? Yeah. That's your business model to get you to yes. subscribe to all the little whiz bangs that Nitro yes. lets you do to your Nitro is how they make money. That's how they do this for free. Um, they've been, been getting, I don't know if they're running a little low on cash, but they've been getting a little Nitro uh, uh, overboard lately when you launch it, so you can just get past that. Some people complain it's annoying people a little bit. Um, one other thing is that, and, without, and I don't want to confuse anybody, but since the dawn of Discord, when you create your username, if you create your username and it's like Blue Raven or whatever, it'll put a number on the end. So you're Blue Raven number one, two, three, four, five. That way everybody can have the name they want. Um, they're switching from that system to a unique system in the coming weeks. So um, you're going to have to pick a name that's unique. So if you pick a name and it says you can't have it, that's why. It's because going forward, names have to be unique. This is a change. It's starting in a few weeks. It's not a big deal. When everybody creates their username today, I'm sure you won't have any problems. But just to let you know, they're sh shifting so that instead of this not this number, 8783 down here at the bottom, it'll just say your name. And that's what you need. Um, you can, you'll notice here, you can go to any thread. So let's say we're following this thread, Bill here. You can click this, and you can choose a bunch of interesting things on it. You can edit it. You can sort of split it off. Um, you can add in sort of reactions. Uh, you can mark it on red to come back with. Um, another thing that you can do here is, uh, let's see, I thought, there should be a thing to delete it. Yeah, there's a delete as well and various other contexts on there. So that's basically text. If you've ever used instant messenger client, iMessage, it's really just this, only in a giant group. Um, one of the other things we have here, and so that these are our five text ones, we also have a voice one. And I think I just connected, and I think it's using the, the speaker built in. But this is a voice channel that lets you communicate by voice with anybody in there and just basically have a group chat. It's just like a, it's just like a, a FaceTime audio only or <laughs> audio, audio only. only. Or, uh, uh, he's pretty he's pretty up there. there. He's Okay. Yeah, I'll drop out of there. I've got to do some oh. <laughs> but yes, so if you drop in that, boom, you can communicate in real time. If you have your phone, it's going to use your phone, uh, microphone, and earphone just like that. If you have AirPods on either of these, it'll use your AirPods. It's just an instant, like doing a Zoom or any other thing, just it's voice and not video. Um, and that's really great for just sometimes things are a lot easier to explain. So one of the things that you could do is a combination multimedia. You could put a thing in the help chat that says, I need help, Bill. I don't know how to do this, Bill, save me. Uh, and then when Bill responds, says, hey, let's take it to the voice chat just to make it easier. Hop down, just click on general down here, just click on, literally click on it. It will use whatever the default speaker and microphone is, and you guys can just start having a conversation, which, as we all know, sometimes it goes better than type. Sometimes texting is better, sometimes talking is better. Um, and that's how voice works. Um, and that's pretty much the long and short of it. Uh, I know I went a little bit fast on some of these topics, um, is there any questions? Uh, okay, so I I put the dis Discord out, Discord out by now. Uh, like to go and tell all the members of my family, and my friends to join it also. 
Well, it's it's a per you when you're on Discord, there, there's two phenomena here, right? There's your relationship with Discord, which is you're on Discord, right? So you have a Discord account. Then with that, if you look at this this left gutter here, each of the servers will be on here. So if you wanted to talk to your family on Discord, you could create a family server, but you'd have to create your own server. When you click on this icon here, you're joining our server, which is our community. So if you wanted to use Discord to talk to your family, you can, if they install Discord, you can talk to them point to point that way. But the primary means is to join communities that have some connective tissue. Right? Now, it is if a large extended family can click this plus button here and create a family community, and then you guys can have this for yourselves. You can call the channels whatever you want, and you can have voice chat whenever you want, or you can have text chat whenever you want. You could if you'd like to. But for our purposes, what we're trying to get you is signed up so that then you can be sent a link to give you this magic icon here, which lets you connect with these guys. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go, boom. Yes. You have to set up on each device separately? Uh, yes. It's just like any other app. But once you've joined TMG on any app, that's a cloud side setting. So once you've joined it, you don't have to keep joining it. Right? So on one of these devices, you're going to have to click on the link that's going to be in the meeting minutes. When you click on that link and join up, then you are on our thing. You left, you left boy there. And once you're there, any device you go, or any browser, you could be at the library and be like, oh, why don't you get on this? Type in discord.com, give it your credentials, and you're going to see the same interface. The interface is universal. The apps are basically just a website. So anywhere you go, it all looks the same. All right, and sweeping back, I'm just going left, like, like side <coughs> here, here. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, Matt, uh, Rod Byer coming in from Zoom. Question for you. If you have an Android phone, how does it work? Same. It works exactly the same. Basically, it's, a, it's an extremely universal interface that's based on a website. So if you have an Android phone, you would go to the Google Play Store. You would follow the same similar process of searching for the word Discord. You'd install it. You'd get very similar prompts of you know, creating an account. Once you did, that link we're sending today, um, you would click on that link and it will work just as well. Discord is really a website pretending to be an app. All the apps are just a way to present to you the website. So it looks the same no matter where you go. If you had a choice between your Android phone or an iMac, which do you feel would be the most I say easy put it, way to work? I would say put it on both and use the iMac as a home base and the Android phone when you're out and about. If you're really into this and you want to receive the notifications when you're out and about because it's important to you to connect with the community in real time, you want to put it on a phone so you can be out and about. I don't know about you guys, but my eyes aren't that great. And so if I was going to fiddle with it, I'd fiddle with it with an iMac and use the phone as the satellite. Okay, thank you. Sure. Okay. Uh, so I'm bouncing back. Yes. That was part of the question. <clears throat> if you have a mix system where some people are on with a Mac and another group is on PCs or something mm -hmm. else, can you all work together yes. at the same yes. time? Yes, that's part of the power of this. So let me let me back up and explain how this sort of works. There's a central server. All the communication is occurring on the central server, right? It's all back on the back end. All of these clients, they go out of their way to make great link to look the same. So the PC looks like the Mac, looks like the iPhone, looks like the iPad, looks like the Android, looks like the browser. They all look the same, and they're all talking to the same server. So it's agnostic. So if you have PC users, like my work firewall won't let me log into Discord. <laughs> but if I go off a of VPN on my work computer, and I go on to Discord, um, it goes to the same server, and my phone goes to the same server, and my home enthusiast gaming PC goes to the server, and my Mac Pro goes to the same server. They're all pointed to the same server, and it's agnostic. It just does not care. Okay, so A and B can use different technologies, but you can still talk to each other. Yes, because it's not, and, and the reason is that it's not really using different technologies, because secretly, it's just a website, and the Android app, the iOS app, the Mac app, and the PC app are really just web browsers called Electron, and inside its guts, it's just the same website. That's why it looks identical. Now, when you send a file, mm -hmm. is it a peer specific technology? Not really. It's just ones and zeros. You can pretty much put up anything. You can put up a Docker or a Google or a 
Yeah, it's 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 a it's a it's a what's called a blob. It's just a it's a blob object, which is just basically ones and zeros. It's agnostic. Is there a time limit on the discussion like two or something Not really. Not some really. Of those, some some of those messages have been there for months. Yes. If you if you go to a, a well loved community, um, like I do. I, I'm mildly, in, I'm not into it a lot, but there's some gaming communities I will visit every now and then, and you can scroll back to 2014, and you can scroll for years and years and years and years. So yeah, there's no statute of limitations I'm aware of. Um, it is designed to be basically persistent. It's like a giant. So for a team meeting, are you limited for continuous time? Not that I'm aware of, but it's only voice, it's not video though. Right. But as far as I know, I know people who do some gaming activities that take all night, and so I know it's at least eight hours, at least. Thank you. Sure, it's drop in. It's kind of always running. I do this one. I, would, I do this one every week on Sunday night, and then I go back and look at the last several weeks of data. It's still all there. I just scroll. You just keep scrolling to get back to it. But they keep this stuff for a long time. And I'm on six colors. Uh, Jason Snell has had mm -hmm. one. He's on there, and I can read. Things going back for a long ways. Uh, did you have to pay? The, did you have to sub? The I, I subscribe. To yeah, yeah. Service. But yeah, you can you can withhold these invites and make people pay for them for special exclusive communities, like Jason Snell, the famous Apple uh, enthusiast and correspondent. But Mac Geek Gab had a free one. Yeah. So if you look at Mac Geek Gab, they they're on there every week. They have a free site. So there's a lot of people using this now. It's really. Yeah. But it goes. You can go forever. It's, Yes. If you wanted to set up one for your family, as he was asking about, and it wasn't associated with the TMG, isn't there a monthly charge associated with nope. setting it up? Nope. Nope. Any community, any kind. Unless they change the model in the future, since 2012 when this launched, that's never been the case. This little plus button right here, I'll click it, but I won't really do anything. But you can click it here, it says create my own. It has some samples. It down here says join a server. This is where you would add a URL to an existing server. But you literally can create your own, and it could be on any conceivable reason. They don't care. It's just ones and zeros that we care. So you can make one for your family. You can make one for your church group. You can make one for your church's single group. And then over there where the TNG is on the side, you have little <coughs> icons for all your different communities. So I've got a list of probably 10 or so that I'm on, and they would just write down the page just feel. Just click which one you want to be in, and you're in. It's like yeah. moving around. Yeah. Um, all the way back. Yes, you, there is a direct message. Um, I'm pretty sure you can get that. Down at the bottom. Yeah. Where do we go? Down here? Yeah, it's down there somewhere. I've used it. I've used it. I've only used it twice, but you can do it down there. There's a little. Uh, I know you can do the member list on here, and then one of the things you can do, let me find it here. And just message. So. Oh, oh, yes. You can call people out. I should have mentioned this. You can call people out with the at symbol to get their attention. So I can say at um, Rick Cartwright and say, Rick Cartwright, this is calling you out. And here we get a special notification. But also, you can come up here and we can go here. Option on command. Oh, that's myself. That's my quote unquote self. And I can message him and I can say, hey, we need to call a few members in the fire. All right. So um, that's, you notice there's this direct messages section that opens up. So obviously Bill isn't really going to call anybody in the fire. But uh, that's, I was doing using that as something you probably want to keep secret if he was going to. So uh, that's why that, and excellent, and Rick's down for that. So yes, there are direct messages. And they are, as you notice, because that was deliberately sensitive, it's its own pile. So you can't, other people can't see it. Yes? What kind of notifications are available? So on the phone, um, let me see what the stylizing of the options are real quick. So settings, notifications, <clears throat> Discord. There's just allow notifications. <laughs> it doesn't look like there's any subcategories in that setting. There may be some more specific subcategories in here in the app. In the app, it looks like we have desktop notifications. Um, and then, OK, so we have all these notifications that you can do here in the system. Uh, as far as like activities, you can have a deep loop when all kinds of things happen. Uh, so there is some granular control, but the main switch is just enable on or off. 
the, the, the primary use of notifications is really twofold. One is someone who just wants to see everything. And the other would be if your primary focused on being called out, right? So by the by, you that symbol or you know specific. I, I had to turn it off. It was, I, I get so many notifications from so many different groups, but it was driving me crazy. Right. I literally had to turn it off. I want to go back and play with it, get it more specific, but you, you just be prepared to, to be able to learn your way through that. It yeah. takes some time. I mean, if you're in 14 groups, odds are someone's saying something all day long. Right? That's, That's what I ran into. Yeah, I'm in the uh, app store right now. Uh -huh. Laptop, so I did a search in Discord for Mac, uh -huh. and it comes up with a whole bunch of stuff. And one of them is single box, all in one messenger, uh -huh. and it shows Discord in there. But there's a whole bunch of other ones. How do I know which one I'm supposed to download to be a player in this? We could put the link to the. the yeah, you could put those right in the email. The link to the to the. Yeah. The, the app. So if you go to Discord. Yeah, yeah. You go to Discord. It, they they don't want to give a cut, so they're not in the app store on the Mac, but they are on the phone. So on the PC, slash Mac, you will notice that. So it that's web page, right? Down on for Mac. So that's a good clarifying point. So to everybody who maybe didn't catch that, it's in the App Store for iOS, but it's not in the Mac OS App Store. On the Mac OS, you have to go to Discord.com <coughs> and download the link from there. So that's through a good browser, distinction. Through your, browser. through your browser, thank you. And that, yes, it's one of those things where, you know, on the on the on the iOS store, you're going to get about 100% participation, and on the Mac store, we know that there's 15, 20% of apps just aren't on there because the. But we could put there. we could put the link to the app store. Yes. In the email with the. Uh, the <coughs> yes. But yes. If you would prepare. Along with the invitation link, a whole host of easy links that would be great for the communication if you when you prepare it. Um, so that that'll that'll be helpful. So we'll make sure to include that in there so you have it for both platforms. Yes, sir. They sell something called Nitro, which lets you glam up your stuff. It's I've never done it. It's and you're gonna get cool. you're gonna get harassed by it, but it lets you do things like have your name uh, be highlighted. It has that your uh, name glow unless you use stickers other people can't. Special stickers. It, it does animations yeah, instead of yeah instead of static things it does animated things <coughs> and that, they also make yeah. some money working with larger customers um, for uh, integration and stuff so like they make money integrating themselves like at a corporate level but at an R level it's called Nitro and that's what Nitro is. Yes. I'm what you called yesterday doing most of my videos on email. Sure. If I have a help it's question good. and I just post it without notifications, I'm, I'm willing to wait for sure. response. Is there any pressure to be more timely because of this mode? Uh, it would. It is. It is considered a more timely mode, and but timely is in the eye of the time, right? Like it's up to the people to, to check it or have notifications off. Like I have notifications off right now for TMG Discord, but I'm assuming Bill will because he's so down for the cause, right? So so he's the he's guy. So I'm assuming he will. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm thinking here, I've, I've been working with TMG now for 25, 26 years. Yeah, I, I, think, I think I can be counted on to yes. respond to stuff. But if you at him, he's gonna, week. it's going to put a little more pepper on it if you at him. Okay. <laughs> but you don't need to. Again, it all depends on how many people out there and how many active. And this is something that, that uses the, um, um, the, the network effect, right? Any network is, is power, is power is derived from the number of people in it. And it scales. Uh, there's a formula that says it scales, I think, exponentially logarithmically with the number of people that have, whatever. It scales with the number of people that join. So if a couple people join, and this turns out to not be a real common venue for the group, then you're less likely to get a response. But if people put this on, go to it, if in future meetings our Discord is mentioned and we reinforce the behavior and everybody kind of uses it, if Bill gets an email and says, I'll love to help you, but you got to ask me on Discord, right? I think that's going to drive most of that. Um, but, uh, but once we do that, again, it, the more people on it, the more power it has. So um, it's a great community tool. So if you go to the Discord website, right at the top, download it. That's where you download on your Mac or your PC or whatever. If you go to the App Store, it says a download from App Store button here too. You can go to that to get the actual app for your iPad or whatever. 
Right. Or, so, right. so this download from Mac is what you're looking for, and it literally is just Discord.com. Yeah, that's right there. Yeah, and we'll include a link to this in the show notes okay. uh, so that you can go there on, on all your platforms. Yes. Did you put the YouTube? Can you download the YouTube onto the Discord so it'd be just another source of my drive traffic? Um, of YouTube, like of our, our stuff. Yeah, I think that that we should have. It would. It, it, it's an interesting place for the same notes that we email to live, right? Like, like maybe you could post. Um, in, going forward, in addition to sending an email that says, "Hey, here's the meeting. Here's the PDF. Here's the video. Here's the whatever." Put a similar version in the Discord too as a central place to put it. Okay. So, yeah. Was it just for any of the utility of the NAS that was set up a couple months ago? Um, the the NAS is a separate separate deal. Not really, because the primary function of the, of the network attached server. Service storage, depending on how you find it. That NAS, the point of it is, is to give you a place to put files and to have files that are important, accessible to people in the future. And I think that still has value as an archive. Um, this is a very immediate thing. It isn't about file storage or file sharing, really. It's about communication. George, think about it this way. We post our meeting videos up on YouTube. YouTube, like that, could say, oh, Three strikes, you're out, and our content is gone on YouTube. So you want to have your stuff someplace else stored. And with the use of the NAS, uh, we can. Mark, do you use the NAS as, pr as production for production of the videos? No. Okay. Just a storage. Okay. After I do the videos, then I'll upload them to the NAS, okay. and they're all there along with uh, a lot of the meeting presentations. Yeah. So what raised my question is you're just suggesting maybe putting the video on this as yeah, well. Yeah, since it's on YouTube, it's just a link. And so, okay. you know, yeah, it's a link to YouTube. And you can, get, you can get to the YouTube link also through our web page, if anybody uses the web page. Can I think it's our next month? Is there a meeting next month? One more month. We have one more month. July and August. Okay. So it's not next month. One thing I was going to suggest is that you can see here on the right, this is the nice list. These are all the people that are on our Discord. Next week, we'll come back and we'll see how it's filling up. And if anybody's on the nice list, we'll give them a little thumbs up and ask them how it's going. I have a question. Yes, sir. Okay. I talked to some other user group leaders not necessarily Apple user group leaders. And they all had the same response when I talked about this, and they were like, Discord, what's that? Okay, yeah, I thought it was odd too. Um, but then I went a little farther afield, and I started on some other Discord servers, saying, how do you use this? In other words, as an organization, how do you use it, not as a user? And one of the most common things that came up was a set day, a set time when officers are available on the Discord okay. server for video chat, and subgroups that would have, oh, the people that are interested in Internet of Things are on the Discord server on Thursday's lunch. So it's a way of them doing small user. Yeah. Groups yeah. within a larger user group. Split out groups, yeah. Split, split out, uh, breakout rooms. Breakout rooms. You notice here it has voice channels and it has general. We can add a zillion of these. We can just keep adding and adding and adding and adding for any purpose imaginable. If you go, and Rick can testify this, if you go to like a really, really big gaming community, you will see subfolders of these. You'll see group one, group two, group three, and, and if a bunch of people get together and they're like, hey, let's go do this content. They'll say, well, meet me in room, four, room 14, we'll all pile in there, and then you're in the same room. So, yeah, you can do, we this is just keeping it simple. Rooms. This is just keeping it simple. I've got some that's got a list of rooms that are like this long. You know, they, they're scroll up, you got to scroll to see all of them. Some but they're very, very specific, they manage specific things. Some of these servers have literally thousands of members, of which hundreds and hundreds are all fine. If I took you to, like, like in World of Warcraft, <laughs> you have these discords that for people who play specific 
kind of character or class to get like info about that class, right? And if you go to one of those, you're going to see 80, 90, 100 people online of 10,000 because some of those are kind of generalized <coughs> cash and they join. Not, we would like you to join this server and treat it like it's a really big deal because we think joining this club is a really big deal. But you can join it and forget about it. You don't have to live your life there. But you put that little hook in. But some people the discords are on are part of a community that needs a daily effort and a daily activity. And they're on there literally all day long. It's yep. really up to you. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Through yeah. the Discord yeah. server, let's say we've got in the <laughs> help desk area, would it be possible for us to have a link in a post that's pointing to a file that's on our NAS? <laughs> I don't see why not as long as that way we have very, control of the content that's on our NAS. Right. And but but you're also obfuscating the front door a little bit by only publishing the links inside something that's controlled. This is slightly controlled, so you, you have some control over this through the invite. Mm -hmm. Right. So this is semi-private. So not only is the NAS private, but the link to it that has the vector in is private as well. So that's or a we could have not putting an email. We could have it, let's say, somebody wants to know, how do I use Time Machine to back up my Mac? And I've got a help cheat sheet that's I perfect. I could it. send them a link through the Discord server. They get the link, then they get it, and then they've got it directly from the NAS server. The whole thing is, you know, someone who works at Discord, in theory, could see this. But other than them, this is more secure. No, more I was, secure. What I was thinking is, somebody's posted something in the help desk section. I respond privately and say, here's ah. the link to the tech note that'll tell you more than you ever wanted to know right. about time regime. There's no reason you can do it private, but I will say this. One of the projects I worked on about 10 years ago was our transition to Teams. And one of the things I was responsible for was creating a protocol. And imagine the Teams is a lot like this in some ways. And one of the things is we had to develop a protocol for how to use a large group to use it as part of their actual work. Like literally they are held responsible for using it in real time well, talking to customers. And one of the things we found is that if at all possible, we want to talk and open and not close. Yeah, because because someone may else avail us. So if someone comes on here and says, How do, what color is the sky? You can send them a private message that says it's blue. But if you publish it here in this blue, everyone gets to see it and other people can avail themselves of that knowledge if they had that question but were afraid to ask. So when the next person comes through and they say, how do I use Time Machine? It's right Instead there. of having to ask the question, they can look at search questions yep. that have already come up, yep. see the response, see the tech note, and away yep. they go. Exactly. And then they can also search on anything. Like They can come here and search on Time Machine before they did anything, and they get that article. But it also allows people who are too afraid to ask a question to just see it. Also, people, people don't ask questions sometimes they subconsciously don't realize. So, so someone may be browsing here, and one of the group may have posted, how do I use Time Machine? And they're like, you know, I was wondering how to use Time Machine. Well, if you had sent them a private message, they would just go, I wonder what that was. But if it's out in the open. So now, if it's proprietary, it's protected, it's dangerous, it's interesting. Like, for example, you wanted to send someone's NAS credentials to them. This is more secure than email. I would argue that iMessage would be better. Hey, it's your iMessage if you want to send credentials. That's super secure. In the um, at least they say it is, and I relatively trust it, and that's opposed to it. And probably more than Discord. Um, yeah. Does anybody? Yes, sir. Yeah. Of course, you've got it. You've got the uh, group uh, private right now, so you can't search for it right. on the Discord website. Yeah. You can't search for it. Now. Is there a reason? Okay. You know, are you worried about bots and other things where people are trying to go in and post advertisements, things like that? It's simply a function of the novelty. Uh, we didn't want, before this meeting, have anybody come in. Um, once we try the private link and see how it's going and see if there's a community here, we can turn it on um, and make it public. And that's really up to, to Bill and other officers to decide if they want to be public or not. It was just a function of out of the box, we set it private more than a deliberate okay. decision. Um, but yeah, I, I don't see a problem with that. I think that, um, you know, this group, obviously, I was in, I've been here since like fourth-ish month, mm -hmm. and I was introduced as the newest member, obviously, so we probably like a rate higher than that, and, and maybe the Discord could be a way, part of the push, to get people uh, wider, you know. Yeah, I think that's a good point. Yeah, and that's why no one's on it right now, is because we're sitting on the link, um, and as soon as he sends it, we can get it. Do you think it would be interesting or fun, Bill, to try to 
send the link out now in its own little note so people can try it over here. I just said Pandy. It would be easy. She yeah, said that. Pandy said it. I mean, wait, the, I mean, the problem is how you're going to send it. We can send it from email, I guess. Yeah, a lot of these people have their email, but maybe some of them don't. But whatever, we'll wait till next week. I tried to re reverse engineer the link. I think it's it won't work that way. Yeah, it's pretty secure. <laughs> <laughs> but but it's like it's, it's gobbledygook. It's, it's, it's gobbledygook numbers. But it, it, it expires. They're not permanent. There's a control. I'd like to make a comment that as we watch the traffic, it may be suggestive of topics for future meetings. One hundred percent. Oh, and so mm -hmm. and future chances. So. I mean, I mean, that's I have to let the 20th century data that gets number between the 35 and it gave them the same thing. You said that was a little tongue in cheek, and also, also look more, but less. I said, give me four rail numbers between 1 and 35. Yeah, we know how many people wanted to have a It's consistent with the philosophy of the Bible. Yeah, that's right. 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 Yeah, that's Okay, there's a fountain. Does the fountain keep any water for itself? No, the fountain spews the water out. Does the fountain care where the water lands? Does it care whether the water dries up? Does it care whether it nurtures a plant or not? No, the fountain is just to make sure that the information is flowing out there. So in the same way, when we went with Zoom meetings, not willingly, we were forced into it because of COVID. It widened out the way we could reach people, and we gave people more choices. I look at this and I go, it's either going to be the best thing we've ever done, or it's going to be a failure, and so what? You know, we fail every day. We'll give it a try. I think it makes a lot of sense. Uh, I think it's uh, what a lot of groups are doing, and it's just, it really fits. And it's going to be dynamic. It's not what's in my head or in Aaron's head or God help us Rick's head, okay? It's going to be how you use it, what things you you seem to use, what things, what methods you don't use. That's, you're going to develop the community for us. Yes, go. Right now we're using email at helpdesk.com, and then they send that email for help out to very yeah. few yeah. people. With this, it's going to spread it to everybody that they have. And maybe Bill or myself or whoever usually gets these doesn't know, but somebody yes. that's not normally in the help circle we would that's, know what's going on. Because it's also, for, it's also, also more timely. Oh, yeah. Notification comes up. Every member who's got notifications certain time is going to say, oh, somebody posted something and helped us. Hey, I'm eating lunch. Yeah, I'll take a look yeah. and see what's going on. It's going to be oh, quicker. it's a simple one. How do I rename a hard drive? In the contact industry, we call that swarming, and it's all the rage. You get everybody using technology to be able to have uh, awareness. And then instead of saying it's three days later and someone didn't solve the problem and a customer's mad or some or if it's an internal <coughs> ticket's mad or whatever, make everybody aware using technology, and then everybody can chime in and go, why has this been sitting here? This is pretty cool. You know, if you send an email to help the help desk, you know, I've been used since time of war or wherever. He's on vacation, he's out, he's working on stuff. I know Bill has been extremely generous with some stuff that I've worked with him on lately. But, you know, he's doing stuff. He, he's going to respond in real time all the time. But any of these officers are going to be on here. I know Rick is going to be able to respond. And so that changes the nature. Any of the group can pile on. It can be a sideways thing. It doesn't have to be a top-down thing. It can be a peer thing. You know, it doesn't have to be officer to member. It can be member to member. So... And the other thing that happens too, yeah, go ahead. The other thing that happens too is, is that if, if I respond, he sees that I already responded to that problem. You can back off. So he doesn't have to, you know, and Bill sees that I respond. Yeah. And I, maybe I make a mistake. They can say, hey, no, Rick, I think it's a little, here's another option. Yeah. That's but another, just, it gives so much, so, yeah. it just makes it it's so much better. It's about one out of three times I remember to <laughs> carbon courtesy copy the other people on it so they know I answered the question that the person had. Think of it, it's a digital way of doing what we're doing physically right now. Yeah. So if, if Dick asks me a question over in the corner, the only person who hears the question who hears the answer is Dick. But if he does it in the middle of a meeting, we've got some very intelligent people in this room. And usually one of them will say, hey, 
Have you tried this? So it's a digital way of doing that. I'll give you Swarming. one best practice before we end here that is related to that, and that is that if you see a post and someone says, hey, I want to climb Mount Everest, and you're like, I'm going to help you do that, tell them you're working on it. The worst feeling is to have two people go off and build their own right B flyer, and then one finish 10 minutes before the other and go, I did it, here it is, and the other guy go, ah. Right, so if you're going to launch a fleet of 1,000 ships, just say so. So that someone else doesn't go and start. Oh well, you know. Well, I dug all through my basement for a, for a uh, my my old Apple One motherboard, and it turns out that you know someone else already scored one. So, I've got another question. Sure. Um, I know obviously you're very intimately familiar with the teams of Lexus Lexus how it's constructed. Yeah. And and we have like two different ways of doing things. We have you can create a team. Anybody can create a team. Yeah. You can then start. You know. Okay, here's a channel for people really involved similar to this that yeah. get involved in a project and all talk yeah. in that first channel. Okay. And then you can do peer one on one type conversations mm -hmm. where you can involve four people and you can but those don't persist. They right. By our record keeping policy. You know, By security. Also. Yeah, yeah, it's being so, yeah. <laughs> so cool. that, that goes way after cool. that period of time. But then I look at things like Solterra porn that shows up. I used to be interested in on, on the Subaru Solterra movie. And the Solterra forum, anybody can go and create a thread or start a discussion, but it's not quite the same as a channel. Right. Like, I would consider stuff up here kind of like their categories. Do you consider those categories, channels? I consider them channels. So, channels. So, could somebody else create their own channel, a sub channel over the internet? If we give them power to. It's all about administrative and who decides who does what. So, you can do it, it's just a question of. Yeah. 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 So typically the way this is done is there's tiers. Well, they have two tiers. Well, there's owner, which is TMG data. But other than that, there's two tiers, power and no power. And I, I, I only set it up at that level of granularity, but the, the security settings are beyond comprehensive. It's like eight pages with 30 items each. It's just zillions and zillions of scenarios. And yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. You can create clusters of permissions. It's way over the top of what we use it for. So it is possible in the permissions to say that users of a certain tier, or any tier, can create channels, can change things, can rename them, whatever. So it is possible to have that. But it is not threaded by design. It's not a threaded thing. Right. The reason I asked that was because like, if somebody comes in there and they, they go in the help desk, and they say, I want to, uh, I'm going to post something because I need help with something. And then say three or four people respond, and there's a, they, they, it's a complicated issue. So there's an ongoing dialogue for a while. It, are those grouped in any way under They can desk? be if you do it right. So for instance, if, I, if we just have, uh, so I'm going into help desk here, and we see we see the, uh, the, the help desk screaming uh, beast here. If you click reply, and you say, that's how much, how much wood? <laughs> oh, no. I'm not going to type it out. And, and so that's a normal reply, but then I believe there is a threaded reply where it says create thread. Uh, okay. and, and I'll say... Um, you can also reply to a message so that yeah. it threads it automatically. This is a thread. And so now this is split it off, and there's a see all threads. So there's a start of a thread here, so it does have thread. I've never used it before. I found this out just now because <laughs> I've never used the threading, but it does have a threading. So, but there is a thing where if you reply, yeah, it'll say what you reply to. So it'll say add and that's an example. So you can see here, um, like, um, if you reply to stuff specifically, it should call it out. The reason I ask that is because one of the things that, you know, especially you know, a number of people who are involved in asking questions and answering questions, is if you have it all meshed together in one big right. thread. Even if you do replies and it calls, it calls that right. it, it's sign nice. in front or something, it would be hard to find necessarily what you're looking for, as opposed to saying what's the, all the top, what are all the topics that are being brought up, right. all the threads. It's, not, it's sure. not like a B bulletin form. You know, it doesn't have the form energy. It has the group chat energy. It has the team's energy, right? You know, it's really based on this is this is really like Slack for communities, really, and right. Teams is really Slack for Microsoft stealing it. 
But if you get a bunch of people in a room and you get a bunch of people in this community all just start typing stuff, it, it, it gets messy. Some of it is going to be solved you know, by just dumb luck of the community never being so massive that the help desk has got like 50 things going at once. But I, we should experiment with that thread creation element based on your feedback to see if it is useful for organizing this stuff. It would make it better. We'll give it a try. And then also, can you search? I assume you can search the threads. Or search uh, let's the search posts. for, um, there's all kinds of options for from, who has, but let's just search for wood. I type that in. <laughs> And while you're looking for that, next month, uh, when, when people come to meeting, if you've got this installed and you bring your device, we can, you can actually type during the meeting and we can just experiment so and play. You know, while raise your hand and yell or whatever. Yeah. So it did have to index it because it's never been indexed before, uh, but it took like two seconds. Uh, <laughs> it. So your search looks like it isolated. Yeah, and it did. It isolated it. So yeah, it works okay. Again, this has been calibrated by being used by hundreds of, a hundred-ish million people for some years. So a lot of the features are in here somewhere. Yes? Well, I like to scoop things up. Is oh. there a way to delete stuff? Um, yes. I, let's find out. I deleted. I deleted. I have a lot of silly things as built here. Let me go right here. We'll go to delete message. Yeah. You can delete. And you can delete says, your own message. Are you sure? Are you sure? And then it's gone. You can delete your own messages. You can delete your own messages. The, the administrators can delete others. The people with power You're can delete others. You're logged correct. Yeah, right. So you're locked into some ad. Right, so, so I, but, but so anybody should be able to delete their out. own stuff too. Huh? Anybody should be able to delete their own stuff too. Yeah. But just not their peers. Unless you're on your but if you start deleting my pictures, Bill, I'm going to get a little. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What can you say about the company behind this group? I'm just curious to know. They're called Discord. Um, they were given a huge uh, amount of money from Sony to be the, uh, the primary. Uh, Thing like this that integrates with the PlayStation, so Microsoft couldn't do it. So Sony invested a crap ton of money in them for that exclusivity. I think it was forty million dollars or something like that. I don't know where they bought that. It's not a, crap. a lot of money. Well, it is for Discord, uh, and that's one of the reasons why uh, they peddle the Nitro is because stuff. They, all they do is this. It's a company called Discord. All they do is this. I can tell you, and it's hard to convey an internal representation of something external, but I can tell you that in certain industries, particularly games. This is it. This is the it. I was trying to go now. This is the Reddit. I don't know if that analogy helps, but this is the thing um, that people use to communicate. And, and again, if we were to log in as uh, someone who did that, you would see this absolutely flush with activity. You know, yep. we just have a small group, dozens of entries, dozens of entries. It scales from you. Know, you could literally set one of these up for just you and your two best high school friends to have a place to come and chat. Uh, that's centralized, or it could be your extended family, it could be a church family, uh, it could uh, probably not want to be work related because it's proprietary, but uh, it could be work friends related. It could be anything. And like I said, I've seen this list on the right here with literally 99999 and it just clips because there's over 10,000 people that are offline in our group. So yep. I think we can handle our group. You know, well, most of us here have been using emails and text messages for a long time, yeah. and we have a certain comfort level. Sure. This is brand new. It'll take a while. We have to be able to crawl before we can walk, sure. before we can run. So we need to be kind of helped along so right. we can become familiar with it. And so it becomes something that we want to use. Yes. I think and, the biggest uh, thing to that is dog food. You've heard the term dog food, right? I think the officers need to use it as part of, like, you know the thing they say where you put, like, broccoli <laughs> every week for, like, a month in order before you make them eat right? Get it out there, get it in the thing. So this needs to be something that the meeting notes are posted to. They remind people that they can use, that we get used to it, to give it time. So we just want to see next week before the break how well it kind of takes off. But that doesn't mean it's the end thing. We're, I think, and I can't speak for the officers, but I'm just going to speak for the sub-team. Our goal is to give this a few months, and there's the hiatus, which is or the, the summer thing, which is a good time to see if people are using it communicate during that time, right? If someone needs Mac help in July, they can come here, right? And then we'll see. If it doesn't take off because it's just not adding enough value or whatever, I don't think the intent is to be draconian about it, but we'll see if people can get used to it over time. And again, it's just for this group. You can still continue to use your other tools for other things, but if you want to get help, this is probably going to be a faster, more efficient, more modern way than the email chain. And that's the main thing. I think that's really, the genesis of this was Bill really, I think, saying 
I think, I can't remember if it was written or me or Bill who said, you know what would make more sense for these kind of requests in Discord? But it was one of those. So I had to be prepared for preparing. Yeah, I don't know. So when you get the email today, <laughs> just real quick before we run out of time, when you get the email this afternoon, there's going to be this link. And so you, you go in to Discord, to the website, get the app, install on your Mac, install on your iPhone, wherever you want to install it. The link to, to, to give you the passcode to get in, so to speak, it's only going to be good for so long, like two or three weeks. So you need to take action on that just to get it set up. It's going to ask you some information. Handy just set hers up. What it asks you to ask for your name, a password, and an email address. And birthday. And a birthday. And your yeah, birthday. Yeah, they want to know you're old enough it. to do this. So <laughs> do it. Log in when you get a chance. And then take your time playing with it when you're comfortable. You don't have to rush. And bring, bring your questions next month. We'll take a few minutes during the meeting, I guess we could next month, to talk about what kind of questions you have. Is it working? What are you, what are you having trouble with? And help you work through it. I think, I think we ought to have a session, like you suggested, 15, 20 minutes. To answer questions. Because some people are going to catch on fast. Right. Some people are going to catch to on post real post slow. Maybe next week it makes sense to have a post op Post-op follow-up questions. You try it, you know, trouble you run into, stuff like that. Here's like a follow-up. Call me or call somebody, the time of day. and we can send you another one. Email us, and we can send you a new link. Yes, sir. What other thing? Are there any security issues with this? No. Um, other than the fact that that company can see anything we post on here. We are right now using a private invitation, which means the only way to get this is a very long number. You're going to see an invitation, right? So without it, you can't get in here unless you work for that company, in which case, the, and we're also sending you but um, the only thing is, just like any other service like this, you have to assume that when you talk in here, the people that own this site in theory can use that for machine learning, they can use it to train the Discord LLM that's probably coming at uh, some point, so I should be mindful of that. But it's not particularly in the yeah, industry, so you don't want to make your social security it. number. If I've got their phone number, I'll probably have to a message for that. But it is our server, and for now, we're the only ones who can. Thank you very much. Thanks, everybody.